Hey guys, I'm Bud Elliott with CBS Sports and 24-7 Sports. A little over a decade ago, I set out to ask the question, how much talent does it actually take to win a national title in college football? It's important because you have to recruit to a certain standard if you want to take home the ultimate prize. But what is that standard? I called it the blue chip ratio. Four and five star recruits are pretty rare. They're only about 8% of all scholarship signees in D1. And what I found is that at least half of your classes over the last four years need to be made up of those four and five star prospects. If it sounds like a lot, it is. And almost everybody out there that's playing for a national title and everybody who's won it over the last decade has met this, this threshold. And the thing is, you might think, okay, Georgia, Alabama, they're super loaded. That's true. But the bottom actually is pretty interesting in this list, which we'll get to in a second. Auburn won it at basically just 50% when they had Cam Newton. Clemson, when they had a special quarterback, Trevor Lawrence to Sean Watson, uh, was also fairly low. The blue chip ratio is not a guarantee that you will win a national title. It is not a substitute for good coaching, good culture, good character, good player development, all that kind of stuff. But it is an exclusionary rule. If you do not have at least a 50% blue chip ratio, you're pretty unlikely to actually take home the prize. Let's get to the list. This year, we have 16 members and some interesting milestones. Alabama is the first team to hit the 90% mark. That is the highest of all time. They're just coming off a ridiculous recruiting class, and that class followed up three awesome recruiting classes. Nick Saban clearly trying to win yet another national title as his career. It was kind of on the back half of his time there at Alabama, and my numbers suggest that Alabama will be a strong contender for the national title if they can play to their talent potential. That's kind of a no-duh statement, right? Bama's won a whole bunch of titles under Nick Saban. Nick Saban recruits like crazy. They're awesome. Ohio State, 85%. Yes, they've lost two years in a row to Michigan, but they also played Georgia better than anybody did last year. And if they had beaten Georgia, almost certainly would have won against TCU, I think, in the national championship game. Georgia, the two-time defending champion, comes in at 77%, which is maybe a little bit lower than what you might have thought, but still, 77% for Kirby Smart's Bulldogs. Excellent number there. Jimbo Fisher, you might recall, two years ago, signed the top recruiting class ever. Now, they're at 73%. Prior class wasn't that great. This class they just had last year, not so amazing. But that 2022 class is really carrying this number, and A&M has a lot of issues to fix, Maybe new coordinator Bobby Petrino can get them right. But if they do get it right, the talent that they have there in College Station is pretty special. Clemson at 72%, always extremely picky, choosy in recruiting. They evaluate well. They generally develop well. 72% is a nice high number for the Tigers. Speaking of the Tigers, LSU 71%, a very strong number for Brian Kelly in Baton Rouge. He won the West in his first year there as the Tigers head coach. Texas, 70%. The expectation will be for the Longhorns to win the Big 12 this year under Steve Sarkeesian. They have an interesting matchup in Week 2 going to Alabama. If it's not Texas, though, maybe the expectation will be that Oklahoma bounces back. Oklahoma checking in on our list at 70%. Oregon with Dan Lanning at 67%. Notre Dame, 65%. Florida, interestingly, at 64%. Obviously, Billy Napier is an excellent recruiter. Speaking of excellent recruiters in the Sunshine State, Miami checks in at 61% with Mario Cristobal. James Franklin, his Penn State and Nittany Lions have been on this list pretty consistently. They have gone to multiple Rose Bowls. They just can't seem so far to get over that hump, but maybe this will be the year. They come in at 55%. Michigan at 54%. Back-to-back -back playoff appearances, meeting that threshold. You don't need to hit the threshold to make it, but you generally need it to win it all. USC 52% returning to the list this year after they a, a nice strong class for them last season and, and a brief uh, time away from the list. And Auburn barely hanging on at 51%. Of all the teams on this list, certainly some would surprise me quite a bit if they took home the ultimate prize. I, I would have a hard time you know, seeing Auburn or this Florida team or, or probably this Miami team doing so. Anybody else, though, it's not inconceivable that they, they click, they stay healthy, their talent plays up to its level, they coach well, and they have a decent baseline to win it all.
If you're looking at this list, you might be saying, wow, it seems like we have a lot of super teams in college football. And I think that there may be something to that. It's a trend that I've been studying over the last few years. And this year, I think everybody who suggested we have super teams may be correct. In fact, this year, there are eight schools at or above the 70% blue chip ratio mark. We've never had that before and really have never come close. That is pretty wild to me. And it does suggest that if you're going to win the national title as a blue chip ratio team that's down there in the 50s or maybe the low 60s, you're probably going to need to pair that level of talent with a special quarterback. So are we in an era of super teams? I, I think so. Luckily, though, the super teams do seem to shift around a little bit. Like we, It was Bama for a while. Urban Meyer's Florida teams were, were, were pretty super. Kirby Smart recently. Ohio State has been an excellent team for quite a while. So it's not just one team constantly. Although, if you're a fan of a team in the SEC East, you, you might be pretty tired of Georgia at this point. Let's talk also about who could get back in the list next year or maybe get in for the first time. Two teams that do a pretty good job recruiting. They've been improving recently on the field and on the recruiting trail and are former members of this list, Tennessee and Florida State. You want a potential first-timer on the list? South Carolina. If Shane Beamer has a better year than expected on the field, maybe South Carolina is able to bump up into that top 10 in recruiting and that class could push them up there. That'd be pretty nuts because South Carolina hasn't won the SEC Hey, stranger things have happened. I also like to break this down by conference. The SEC has six, Big Ten three, Pac-12 with two, Big 12 with two, and the ACC with two. Notre Dame represents the independents. There's one for you. Now, it's not really surprising. The SEC is generally the best conference, followed by the Big Ten pretty quickly thereafter. But how will that change next year with the SEC expanding and the Big Ten expanding? Next year, with Oklahoma and Texas going to the SEC, and USC going to the Big Ten. That would give the Big Ten and the SEC 12 of the 16. So when you see the media suggesting that we are going to a two-league super conference type format, I don't think they're totally right. But in terms of the national title, 12 of the 16 does rep represent a pretty good super majority here of the teams that have a legitimate shot to win the title. Will this last forever? Guys, honestly, I doubt it. The blue chip ratio has been pretty hard and fast for about a decade now. And you might say it's never going to get busted. Look at all these super teams. They're getting more talented than they've ever been. But yet, I can point you to a couple times I was pretty nervous, right? When Marcus Mariota and Oregon, they, you know, they, they didn't beat Ohio State, but they weren't too far away. They were fairly competitive in that game early on. Last year, TCU did get smacked by Georgia, but I, I can't tell you that I was not, a little bit nervous when they were beating Michigan. So, you know... I do think this has a chance to get busted. It will not last forever. And I think there is a profile of team that is likely to be able to punch above its weight class and take home the title even if they don't meet the blue chip ratio. That profile of the team is almost certainly one that has a blue chip ratio in that 40% range, preferably the upper 40. So a, a near miss team that has a special quarterback or maybe a team that found a way to get some really, really good portal players for a single year and gear up for a special run. This year, I think there are three teams that fit the bill. Looking at the national title odds, Tennessee, Florida State, and Washington are the three that show up in the top 10 or the top 15 of national title odds. They all have quarterbacks who project to be NFL draft picks if they play to their potential in Joe Milton, Jordan Travis, and Michael Penix at, at Tennessee, Florida State, and Washington respectively. Tennessee is in the 40% range this year. Florida State and Washington are both in that high 30% range. So would it surprise me if one of these teams took home the national title? Certainly, right? Most of your elite players still come from high school. But I'm definitely monitoring these guys. They all seem to fit the profile of what I think the breakthrough team that would finally bust the blue chip ratio would look like. <laughs>